Welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be continuing our conversation on intelligence with Unit 5, Topic 10, Psychometric Principles and Intelligence Testing. Okay, so right away, let's just define the term psychometric, because I feel like for most people, this is not a term they're used to hearing. Psychometric is a branch of psychology that focuses on the quantification of mental attributes. Essentially, this is the measuring of the mind. We are looking at quantifying our behaviors, mental attributes, and performance. To measure intelligence, we use intelligence tests, which are standardized tests. This is important because it allows us to compare the scores of individuals with others who have taken the test. Intelligence tests will have a uniform testing procedure to make sure that everyone is taking the test the same way. In order to make sure the tests are standardized, it's common to give new tests to a sample group of people before we give them to everyone else. This allows for testing administrators to get a basis for future comparisons. It also allows administrators to see if a test has reliability, which is when scores on a test stay stable over time. This just means that our scores should not fluctuate that much if we keep taking the test. Our intelligence is not constantly changing every minute, and the test should reflect that. In order to check a test reliability, researchers will test individuals multiple times and may use a split in half method, which is when they split the test in half to see if test takers do better on one part of the test compared to the other part. Ideally, there should be a high correlation between the two parts of the test, which would show that the test is correlated with itself. Lastly, the test needs to have validity. This just means the test is assessing what it claims to assess. Remember, we talked talked about reliability and validity back in our Unit 1 Topic 4 video. We can break validity down into four different types of validity. The first is content validity, which is to the extent in which a test inquires about the information or behaviors that are of interest. For example, a safety test at work is meant to assess you on different situations you'll experience while at your job. This test only has content validity because it's assessing you in the tasks that you'll be confronted with while working. If it asks questions about situations that you would not experience while at work, then it lacks content validity. There's also construct validity which is to the degree in which a test can actually measure a specific trait or concept. Criterion validity, on the other hand, checks to see if the test correlates with any outside variables or measures. This validity shows us how well the test correlates with a standard comparison. If it's low, the test may not be valid. Lastly, there is predictive validity, which predicts future performance. This validity can only be used when we have a large data set and is only useful at predicting trends and patterns. Individual tests and standardized tests do not have predictive validity for individual test takers. When looking at the results of intelligence tests, we can see scores from a bell curve or normal curve. We went in depth into these curves in our Unit 1 Topic 5 video. I'll quickly review the chart again, but if you need more help with these curves, statistical significance, standard deviations, z-scores, and more, go back and watch that video. It has a ton of different examples and practice problems for all these concepts and much more. An example of a normal curve is the Wechsler Adult Intelligence Scale, a concept from our last video. We can see that on average, about 68% of the people score within 50 15 points of 100. Now you want to remember that when we're looking at intelligence tests, we use a standard deviation of 15. About 95% of all people fall within 30 points of 100. If you are more than two standard deviations below the mean, you may have an intellectual disability. And if you are above the mean by two standard deviations, you may be gifted. I should note that it's rare to be two standard deviations below or above the mean, since over 95% of the population is within two standard deviations of the mean. And again, this was just a really quick overview of a bell curve. If you need more help with bell curve, standard deviation, or anything with statistical analysis, go check out my Unit 1 Topic 5 video. And just like that, we are done with another topic review video. Now you know the drill, answer the questions on the screen, and check your answers in the comment section down below. And if you're finding value in these videos, don't forget to subscribe and share them with your friends. It's a great way to support the channel and lets me know you want more content. And if you are struggling with AP Psychology, don't forget to check out my Ultimate Review Packet. The packet covers everything you need to know about AP Psychology. It's a great packet that'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.